So the latest communique is that uh, the people from Ecuador are trying to develop a corridor so that a science, if he needs medical attention, can go to the hospital and get back there without being arrested or something like that. No, I don't know how that will work because um, basically uh, there's an arrest warrant out there and he's to be extradited to Sweden to stand the charges. Now, I mean, the deep thing that the DMC, I mean, the stress of this thing and hanging over your head, I mean, not everybody in the MC, I mean, the Prime Minister or the President of Ecuador might be his partner and everything else, but who knows the position, the ambassador and stuff, they must be tired of this guy. No, man, he's causing us problems. Oh, this and that. And, they, and, and he's feeling the ice up there, it's getting so cold. And so it's, it's telling on his health, maybe mental health, maybe, uh, maybe developing uh, hemorrhoids, maybe uh, heart problems, who knows. But I believe that as soon as he steps out here, I mean, they might sneak him real quick into the car. And uh, the car, I guess, has diplomatic immunity too. So when he gets into the hospital, and um, the car can go straight up in. So in the lobby, they could take him. I mean, in the bed, they could take him. You know, give him 24 7 police call. And as soon as the doctor says he's good, we're not going to send him up to Sweden. <laughs> this guy is a joke, man. But you see, uh, he's supposed to be from the ruling class, and he's supposed to be so smart. I mean, when he started his WikiLeaks, I guess the media was saying, oh, this is so good. This is a white boy, you know what? So he maybe from, he, he went to all the Ivy League students, went to Yale, Harvard, and Oxford, Cambridge, and London, and then school that down in down under, in New Zealand, the top school, in, in uh, Australia, the top school, so he's bright. But they didn't know if he was out to do some mischief. Maybe, maybe he works with the Antichrist because they were hoping that uh, with the revelation of these various secret and not so pleasant communiques that people would have risen up and, and do something about it. Well, the future is there and who knows, but um, I'm sure he's disappointed that nothing really came out of it. And he's releasing the Syria and stuff. I mean, you know, when people don't have a conscience, well, you see, that's another story. Um, over time, from the 60s to now, the enemy has come up with some last feet and we talk about a paradigm shift and religion is not important. And to get into good education, you don't have to read the books, there's no way to find this stuff. And the exams can just be about playing games, like all the LSAT and all the standardized tests. Because it's, this is a fictitious thing to put. This one run two and this one run back two. Well, what's up here? You know, I mean, I'm stupid stuff, as opposed to testing on something that is a, a comprehensive test from all of the study for the four years or something like that. The, you know, and uh, those tests became necessary because people didn't know anything and go to the police or the guy don't know anything that prepared for the university simply because we're rushing into high school, making it appears that everybody got to go to college and some people they were just playing games in high school and they're not serious, so you had all the police the exam to weed them out. But white folks could pass that exam because the white boy uh, said that exam, you know, the white people think and the experience we have, so they could pass that anything. But me and others who believe that we're supposed to know the whole book and know the concepts and so forth, we have a different orientation and it's a problem of scoring so low that you want to know what's happening. But here is this white hope, this guy who could be in the UN, the general secretary, or the president of the country come from somewhere down south, or he could really uh, become somebody, a senator or some congressman. They, they just have any such high regard, and they know he's a, a low life. You know, and start doing stupid stuff because I mean, there's privacy, and even though you hear something about somebody, you don't just go and tell the other person that somebody could get killed, and uh, you would be responsible for that. Uh, you might be charged because nobody knows, but how can you live with that? So, revealing the diplomatic cable and so forth, you thought that look up, so I'm so good, look, look at me, uh, and then next thing you know, you go over to uh, Sweden. And they always have some two feeds. They always just kind of feel like, oh, you may be so, you, I, I could have some very soon right now. So he figured, like, maybe they were serious. I'm going to use no condom. And he says, stop, man. That's great, bro. Right there. And then, you know, he don't want to go face that music because he figured, like, they should charge him nothing because he's so uh, gifted and handsome and so talented. You know, he could spread people and stuff like that. Uh, and he's so important. Guys don't think so, man. They just look kind of like 
enjoying the movie because it was fun. But they, they don't like you, man. You know? And uh, they don't want to have the baby or any disease you might have. So they say, keep that on the man. Then they don't take it up or split it or whatever. And they charge you truly with and rightly with this sexual assault thing, man. Don't stand in charge and see where it goes there. Don't, don't think that they don't want you in America just like that. Go and take care of that person and see what happen after that. You know what I mean? I mean, nobody put them up. You did the stuff. You did the things with the girl. You did the people uh, come out of the correspondence out. I mean, what do you expect, bro? You know? But face the music, show them that you're courageous to publish this stuff and the bomb. Time to try out, man. Just go for it, bro.